In this video, we're going to go ahead and finish up the character base by creating the arms and possibly the neck. So that way we can begin to sculpt our geometry for our final model on top of this geometry. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we need to do is line up this top image reference because to create the arms, we're going to need to be able to see this top here. And it's not lined up properly with this side image. So it would not create our arms correctly. They would be created too far back and we don't want that. We want them to be lined up perfectly with the other reference images or as close as possible. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we want to do is go ahead and hide this body because it'll get in the way. So I'm going to marquee select all of these NURB surfaces and hit control plus H. And then I'm going to drop down from the outline or the image planes group that we created in a previous video. And I'm going to select this side image plane, press W on the keyboard. And I want to go ahead and drag this over some. Now I can go into the four view. So I'll go ahead and select this four view and I can see this line here is that image plane. And I want to line it up with the furthest point out on this top because this is what we're going to use to line up is this back shoulder blade right here. So let's go ahead and grab our top. So we'll go back to the outliner, select the top and we're just going to pull this up and close to that area right here with this image plane because that's all you can really see from the top view is these shoulder blades the furthest point out so that's what we have to line up with so we'll go ahead and drag this up I can see it is too far back so I will go ahead and pull this forward some and that should line it up pretty good so if I select the side I can kind of move it forward and back a bit and kind of see that that is lining up really nicely right there I think that will work so now that those are lined up, we can go ahead and move them back out of the way. We'll go ahead and just drag this off to the side somewhere and drag the top back down below our model. So there we go. Then we will select our NURB surfaces and we'll hit Control Shift plus H to unhide them. And let's go ahead and get started. Now all we have to do is pull in another cylinder because that's great for building limbs as we saw with the legs, which turned out really nice in shape. So we'll go ahead and do the same thing for the arms. Let's go ahead and go to our surfaces tab and select another cylinder. So we'll go ahead and just pull this up and let's go ahead and pull it forward so we can work with it. And then I'll go ahead and press R on the keyboard and scale this out some. Just enough for the arm. I think that's probably too wide, but that should be okay. I can also scale it here, maybe shrink it down a bit. That should be okay, but we're also gonna need some more spans. Kind of looking at this, I could probably do one, two, three, four, possibly five spans that I'm going to need on this. So we'll just take it to six to be safe. So I'll go ahead and drop down the make nerve cylinder, grab the spans. I'm going to raise this up to six. I think that should be enough for us to shape this for the arm. Now we need to rotate it so it is fitting the horizontal of the arm. So I'll just go ahead and press R E on the keyboard. And now what we'll want to do is rotate it. Now I can see looking at this, widget that if I wanted to rotate it, I would have to rotate it on the Z because it's blue. That is the axis that I need to rotate it on. You might have thought that it needed to be rotated on the X. Just looking at the widget, it looks like it needs to rotate on the X, but this is actually needed to be rotated based on its own pivot axis. So that would be the, if I select it, I can see that it was blue a second ago. Now it doesn't seem to want to be blue anymore because I've done selected it. If I were to select a different one, you can see it goes back blue. And that tells me that it is on the Z axis. So I will rotate it on the Z by 90 degrees. Now I'll put it sideways and I can just press W to move it back. And again, just like we worked with the leg for positioning this, let's go ahead and just go into our four view to get it into position. So I'll go ahead and grab it, drag it up here and kind of get it right where I need it. Now it looks like it may be a bit too long, so I'll go ahead and scale it down just a bit. Because we just need it to make to the wrist, because we're going to be building the hands in polygon mode, just like we're going to be building the feet in polygon mode, because those are just easier to build using polygons and just piecing it together because of all the little toes and little fingers. So let's go ahead and get started with the shaping, just like we did with the torso and legs. We'll just right click, go to Control Vertex, and we'll go ahead and start doing a little bit of shaping here. So I can probably grab these and move them back some. And looks like I want to work. What we want to do is work from large to small. So I'm going to grab a bunch of them and kind of scale them down to get a better shape. Looks like I can grab this, just scale it down. And this gets very simple to do. And I can press spacebar going to full screen for this. Be a little bit easier to work with. And just continue to do shaping. 
This is very easy to do, does not take much time at all. So I'll just go ahead and get the best shape possible here. Shrek here. That's actually pretty close on the bottom, so maybe I'll just grab the two at the top and move them down. And again, I'm looking for that center line. I'm not touching the center line. I'm just grabbing two on one side of the center or two on the other side of the center if I'm going to move them individually like this. So I'll go ahead and grab these two here because the top looks pretty close, but the bottom is too low. So these can come back down a bit. And that looks pretty close right there. That's pretty good shape. So I will wait to drag these down until we've checked it from the side view. So let's go ahead and go to the side. And as you can see, the side's not going to work. So we can't get much detail out of this. This isn't going to do us any good. That's why we needed to line this top view up. So let's go ahead into the top view. And we need to go to 4 so we can check out wireframe. And you can maybe notice that this area here is going to be a little confusing. So you could select all these nerve surfaces and go ahead and hide them. So I hit Control plus H. And I'll go ahead and select this and just right click, go to Control Vertex and continue to do some lining up. Again, I want to work from a large view out. So I want to kind of work with large details and then get more focused on smaller details. So I'll grab a bunch of them, try to get them closer to the shape before I try to do some more detailed, smaller shaping. So let's go ahead. This looks good right here, kind of lined up nice. And let's just go ahead and do some individuals now. So I'll grab this. This can come in some. Uh, this can come in a little bit. And these can be scaled in. Just very quickly putting together the shape for this arm. This great thing about using nerves is it kind of works like clay, so it's very easy to get shapes out of it. It does not take much effort at all. This looks good. And maybe like that there. And I'll go ahead and grab these and just drag these up. Maybe take these and drag these down. This looks pretty good. Let's go into our perspective, take a look at this arm, how it's shaping up. Uh, it's shaped up fairly nice. Let's go ahead and unhide our nerve surfaces so we can see how this is matching up with the rest of the body. So I'll grab all those, hit Shift plus H, unhide it, and that looks pretty good. Kind of formed in. I could probably pull this area here back a bit to match the top view. So I'll go ahead and go back to the top view here. I will mouse over this nerve surface so I make sure I get the control vertex for it specifically. And I'll grab these and just drag these in a bit. And maybe grab these and probably pull them back and up a bit. That'll get me a little bit closer to the shape that I'm looking for. This looks good. And I don't think I have to do much there. Let's go ahead and look at the front view. See if we can get any extra detail out of this. Now again, because we've moved some of these back, it can get confusing to work with. I know that I need to grab all of these if I want to move this area here down, which I don't think I even really need to do because we kind of caught this area of the armpit using the torso. So this all looks very good. There we are. So there's our arm shaped. That's all set up. So we'll go ahead and go back to object mode on it. And we'll go ahead and mirror this using negative scale mirroring. So we'll go back to our panel layout and choose our outliner. And we can see it's cylinder three. So let's go ahead and grab cylinder three, hit control plus G to group it. Then I'm gonna hit control plus D to duplicate it. And then I'll just scale it on the negative one X because I can see it's on the X and this is sitting on the positive. So I can just negative one this. So I'll just hit negative one and press enter. Then to make sure it stays there permanently, I have to freeze the transformation. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll go up to modify and select freeze transformations. We're already in the surfaces drop down menu. So we will go up to edit nerves and we will just go ahead and reverse the surface direction. And that'll take care of that for us. So now we have freeze the transformations and we're good to go with this one here. So here we are, we have most of it set up. We can also set up a neck real fast using another cylinder. This will only take a couple seconds. So we'll just grab a cylinder, drag it up, go ahead and scale it a bit. And then we'll just maybe move it back down and we'll, we'll go ahead and go into our front view to get it into position a bit. Actually, let's do it from the side. It'll be easier to work with. And we'll just right click and go to control vertex. I'll just go ahead and get this into position real fast like. So this should be good. And then we'll just grab these, maybe move them down a bit and grab these here and just drag these in. So really quick shaping for the neck. And I'll go 
ahead and grab these. Now I'm moving them up and down before setting up in the front, so it's going to get a little complex for me. I think I'll be fine though. <laughs> so you could you could do yours the original way that we've been doing the other ones by getting the scaling of it on the horizontal axis before you move them up and down. So I'll go ahead and come to the front. And it's not that complex of a shape, so I can probably just figure this out. This actually looks pretty good. It does need to come. Actually, no, our torso is taking care of that. I could probably just grab all these, the base, and maybe scale them down. And maybe grab these here and just scale them in. Play a little guessing game here. So that's why you really want to take care of the horizontal positioning before you do your up and down movement. So this looks pretty close. Now it does come back a little bit. Let's check this out from the side, see what's happening here. It's actually our torso nerves. You can see it's coming out really far now, so we can probably try to fix that. So I'll go to the control vertex for the torso and see if I can't get that positioned a little better. There we go. That looks good. So you can go ahead and do a once over over all of your NURB surfaces. Make sure everything is lined up just the way you want. This is pretty much set up. We can go ahead and start building our body geometry on top of this. Now, if you wanted to get a little bit more detailed in the groin area, you could go ahead and create two spheres and try to shape them like the buttocks, which is a very common method of creating the base geometry using NURBS is you'll actually create two spheres and then mirror them. You know, you'll create the one mirrored over to the other side just for the glute muscle. So that's how you'd set that up. I am trying to keep this very simple in body shape just to save time. You could be more complex based on a body shape. For instance, if this was a female body, it would be a lot more curvy. You'd need groin cylinders, so something to shape the butt a little better, and then probably breast cylinders if you were doing a female model. But since we're doing a male, we don't really have to worry about that. And this should be good proportional sizes. You know, if we look at it, it looks like it's about the same size as a human body. So this is pretty well shaped. So now we have our base geometry set up. In the next video, we're going to go ahead and start working with the modeling toolkit to build our geometry on top of this using this as a live surface. If you have any questions or comments, please post below the video on brainpoof.com and click subscribe to follow us on YouTube.